Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. Hello there. This is Diamond. Hey, what about this heat? I can think of a lot of times I've been uncomfortable, but this runs itself right up to the top of my list. But the only thing good I can say about it, get your laundry dry in a hurry. I usually wash a few things out in my office because the soap's free. Come to think of it, I was scrubbing a pile of things the day we had that big wind. 97 degrees in New York and we get a tornado to cool us off. I had so much dust in my office, I could have supplied mud pies to the whole neighborhood. And after it was all over, the cigarette ad on Broadway was blowing smoke rings through the trap door of one of my scattered longies. The waves in Long Island Sound were so rough friend of mine capsized, and when he came up, he found three terrified herring hiding in his nose. Oh, it was swell. One minute, it was so hot you couldn't move, and the next, a 58-mile-an-hour wind was doing the moving for you. Then, to top it off, I got mixed up in one of the grisliest cases I'd ever worked on. It all started one evening. The car was moving down a lonely road, two people in it. In a couple of minutes, one of them would be pretty dead. What are you stopping for? (laughs) What are you doing? Let me go. Get your hands off me. No, help. Please, please. Ah! Hey, Ed. Huh? Stop the car a second. What for? Thought I saw something lying back there on the road. So what? Probably a dead dog. No, no, no. Hold it. Too big to be a dog. Oh, for Pete's sake. Back it up about 20 yards. <sighs> that, 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 that's good. Okay, where is it? Right over there. Yeah. Hey, come on. Hey. <gasps> oh, holy cow. Yeah. She dead? She's wrecked. I think I'm going to be sick. Me too. Uh, uh, Let's get to a phone call the cops. Knit one, pearl one. Hmm. Knit one, pearl one. Ah, there, you little fiend. Now, what does it say about the heel? Mm hmm. Turn the heel. Hmm. Oh, I dropped a stitch. Now I gotta go back and pick it up again. Yeah? Rick, what's the matter? Oh, Miss Asher? You and your bright ideas. What did I do? You did plenty. I'm a nervous wreck. What from? You remember you said I ought to take up something to keep me busy in the office? Yes. You remember you mentioned knitting? Oh, no. Oh, yes. I've dropped more stitches than the cross-eyed surgeon. You idiot. I was only fooling. Well, I wasn't. I did it up right. Book of directions, enough yarn to wrap up King Tut and all, the, all his handmaidens, <laughs> and two of the finest bone needles and gimbals. Now, don't laugh. I was making Francis a pair of screaming argyles. Well, keep with it, strong heart. You went out. Yeah, you darn right. Oh, what I said. Darn. Get it? Helen, are you still there? Yes, wasn't funny? No, Rick. Okay, come on over. Let's neck. Yes, Rick. Shame on you. Yes, Rick. Is that all you can say? I love you. And I'll see you about eight. Oh. You don't sound very happy. Well, that's such a long way off. I'll give you time to make plans. Bye. Bye. Now, let's see. I got to take out one, two, three, five rows. Yeah, what is it? Rick? Oh, oh how are you all? Very unhappy. You should see me. I got to take out five whole rows just to pick up one lousy stitch. What? No, forget it. What are you unhappy about? I'll tell you about it when you get down here. 
The 5th Precinct's 20 blocks. Can't you give it to me over the pipe? I wouldn't ask you if it wasn't important. And I'd rather not say anything over the phone. Okay, okay. Stop making like Porsche face in life. I'll be down as soon as I finish this heel. Heel? Yes. If you must know, I've taken up knitting. Coming from you, I am unmoved. I don't care if your building sergeant notice a fur line money belt. Get down here as fast as you can. All right, Walt. But you'll be sorry when it starts getting cold again, and I won't knit you a sweater to cover your little old blue stomach. Oh. Bye, Walt. Getting Walt's goat was a sport with me, and whether he'd admit it or not, he got a kick out of it, too. Sometimes I wouldn't stay on the rib as long as I usually do, but that was only because Walt always starts sounding just a little bit worried. Then I know it's time to lay off and get serious. Don't misunderstand me. I never lay off entirely, and I never get completely serious. Those are two habits that don't help find the solution any quicker. They just fit you with a mess of ulcers, and you still end up too worried and too serious. I closed my office and headed for Walt's precinct. When I walked in, I spotted Sergeant Otis leaning back in his chair with his number 12s resting on the desk. Hello, Otis. Well, how's the big private detective today? Just fine, Otis. And how is the flash of the 5th precinct? Uh, Don't you worry about me, Diamond. I'll get along. Better go on in and see the lieutenant. He wants to see you. Hey, what's it about, Diamond? You need someone to help you from the police force? You know, Sergeant, you've got a fine head on your shoulders. <laughs> well, I'm glad you noticed. The one under your arm isn't so bad either. Uh... Hello, Walt. Rick, why don't you leave that poor guy alone? After you leave, he comes running in here and cries all over my desk. Otis? Ah, he wouldn't shed a tear if he was standing in an onion warehouse watching his grandmother set fire to herself. Yeah, well, give him a rest for a while. I got a big problem I want to talk to you about. All right, Walt, what's on your mind? Well... I don't know quite how to give it to you. It isn't strictly kosher for the police force to go around asking for help. Now, wait a minute. I don't want any apology routine. If you want a favor, you came to the right boy, and you know that goes without saying. Yeah, I guess I do. But this is a pretty big favor, Rick. The, uh, commissioner's on my back. So is everyone else that's got anything to do with this city's government. Sounds rough. What did they do? Find out you were hiding a chimpanzee in a cop's uniform and calling him Sergeant Otis? Oh, now be serious for a second, Rick. Sure, if you'll get to the point. All right. I guess you've been reading about these homicides we've been having for the past three weeks. Yeah, pretty messy. Well, the powers that be say, solve them or turn in my badge. Oh, well, now wait a minute. Don't they know that this is the toughest kind of a killing? The killer's obviously got a lot of screws loose, and a maniac doesn't need a motive to kill. Don't those swivel chair bigwigs know that a crime without motive is the toughest job in the world to crack? Sure, sure, they know all that, but the public and the press is yelling its head off, so the pressure is on. What do you want me for? You've got one of the best departments in the state. When you were on the force, it was the best department in the state. Now you stop that. Then stop twisting my arm. What do you want? I want help. I've got to crack this case by next week or I'm out of my ear. You're the best detective we had on the force, and you're the best private gumshoe in the city. Oh, well, that's better. Now, what about these killings? Each time they find some dame looking like the last of a hamburger sale... Oh, excuse me a minute, but... Yeah? Lieutenant? No, Jack the Ripper. What do you want, mallet head? Uh, We just got a report from a guy out in the river road. Another one of them butcher killings. What? Yeah, some dame all hacked up and lying beside the road. Okay, get the car out. I'll meet you downstairs. Oh, did you hear that, Rick? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, come on. You want me along? Of course. I can brief you about the whole setup on the way over. I don't know whether it's such a good idea to get mixed up in this. Why not? Well, it looks like whoever gets close to this killer doesn't have much of a future. Well, you can't live forever. Oh, aren't you the sweet one? No, that's not what's worrying me. What is, then? When I go out, I want a nice, comfortable place to lie down in. The way this nut goes to work with a knife, I might end up in a freezer. All right, all right, everybody's back. Go on through, Lieutenant. Show him your biceps, Otis. Ah, comic. How did all these people get out here? This is ten miles from anything. Uh, Someone must have heard me call the police. Uh, When I left the phone booth, the whole crowd followed me out here. Who are you? Uh, My name's Ed Cody. Me and my friend here found a body. Where is it? Right over here, Walt. Oh, how does it look? The way you thought it would. Oh, Otis. Yeah, Lieutenant. Yeah, here's your bicarb. Now you see what I'm up against, Rick. Pardon me. This is the third killing like this in three weeks. Oh, I don't feel too good. Let's walk over this way. Yeah. 
Cody, you and your friend come along. We want to ask some questions. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, whoever the guy is that's pulling these murders is a complete lunatic. Are they all like that, Walt? You should have seen the last one. How'd, uh, how'd you guys happen to spot the body? Oh, well, I saw it first, and I told Ed here. Uh, yeah, uh, we were just driving along when Max spotted something lying beside the road. I backed her up, and we got out. I saw what it was. I left Mac here and went back to town to call you. What's your full name, Mac? McCarthy. John McCarthy. Okay. Now, what are you doing, Rick? Uh, looking at the road. Hey, uh, that's your car up there, Cody? It's Max. I was just driving. You went ahead how far? Oh, I'd say about 20 yards. Then we backed up and left the car where you see it now. You won't find much even if the road is soft. The car and any other car would have blocked out the killer's tracks. Uh, maybe he didn't use a car. Maybe he walked her out this way and then killed her. No, this place is ten miles from anything. He drove, all right. And this crowd has ruined any footprints for sure. Oh, here come the boys. Come on, Rick. As soon as they start examining things, we can get back to the station. Yeah, I'm going to go through the whole file on the last two killings. You won't find much. Well, a change of reading never hurts anyone. I'm getting tired of reading those dime novels. Too bloody. <laughs> the whole mess. No leads at all, huh? Not a one. I'm getting nearsighted from looking at all the lineup. We've picked up everything from drunks to safe crackers. Not a lead. Same type of crime in every case. Hmm. This killer's got a crazy streak as wide as Broadway. Oh, wait until the commissioner hears about this one. Well, yeah? Give me a pencil. Now, tic-tac-toe is out. I got a headache. Stop waving your gills and give me a pencil. Here. What are you doing with that map? Drawing circles. Now you stop that. That's the scale of this city, and I don't want it loused up by your doodling. Look at that. So you make a dandy circle. Thanks. What's it for? How should I know? You drew it. Drew what? The circle. Wasn't that a little foolish? Of course it was. That's what I'm yelling about. Well, that's bad for you. What is? Yelling. I know it. I thought you said you didn't know. Know what? About the circle I just drew. What circle? The one on the map. That's what I was yelling about. Why? You didn't draw it. I know I didn't. You did. What for? How should I know? You're a policeman. What in blazes has that got to do with it? You were a rookie, weren't you? Of course I was. You worked your way up to sergeant and then to head of the homicide, didn't you? You know very good and well I did. Wasn't it a little tough? You bet it was. I pounded the beat for four long years. Did it by the sweat of my... Now, wait a minute. How did we get into this? You asked me about this circle I drew. I did? Yes, Walt. But you didn't know what it was for. Oh, yeah. What is it for? It's for you. I get... Yeah, it's not bad. Oh, I knew it, I knew it. You lowlife, you conniving, dirty, underhanded louse. You always do this to me. I think you sit around nights and pull the wings off of flies. Moths. All right, moths. Sit around and dream up little monstrosities to pull on the police force and use me as a... a, a, a guinea pig. A... Right, guinea pig. You call me, Lieutenant? No, get out of here, you idiot. Yeah, yeah Lieutenant. Diamond, for once I'm going to find out what's at the end of this merry-go-round. I want to know about that circle. <laughs> And I'm going to get it out of you if I have to shove that map down your throat. Huh? This happens to be the commissioner, Oh, well, not you, Commissioner. Are you on the map, Yes, Commissioner. I'm Yes, Commissioner. Well, I just went out and looked at the body. Yes, but. But, but. But, but. But, but. Your motor's running. You shut up. Oh, no, Commissioner. Somebody else. All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, who was it? I am not talking to you. Don't you want to know about the circle? No. Fine. When I was looking over the reports on the killings, I noticed something. You don't say. Say what? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you don't want to play, be a sorehead all your life. Well, I noticed that all of the killings, including the one we looked at this afternoon, were within at least ten miles of each other. And the first one, this one, this one right here, was exactly in the other direction from the last one. Bully for you. No, it's nothing. Well, using the first and last homicide for the edge of the circle, we find that the other killing also falls within the sphere. Okay, so what? Mm -hmm. Getting interested? No, I'm not. Well, the girl this afternoon had been dead for about 14 hours, wouldn't you say? Yeah, but the coroner can come closer. Well, about anyway. Now, in the other two cases, it says that both girls met their deaths about 3 in the morning. Now, if the last one was dead 14 hours, she comes close to that time, too. Okay, okay. What does that prove? Not a thing, but it's something to go on. This is a wild one, Walt. But let's say that our killer started off with his victim somewhere within that circle. 
to drive five miles, half the distance of the circle. It would take him, oh, about... Uh, uh, Fifteen minutes. Okay, 15 minutes. Now, that means he left his starting point around 2.45. Now, that's a funny hour to be so consistent. You're right. Bars close at 2. 45 minutes to talk a dame into a ride. Hmm? Might be. Oh, I'll be done. I may be all wet. The killer probably started from somewhere outside the circle, but we can start by eliminating the idea of the night spots anyway. Yeah, Lieutenant? Checking all the night spots from... Uh, 45th Street and Broadway, the center of the circle. From 45th Street and Broadway for 10 miles in every direction. Yeah, Lieutenant. That means cafes, bars, bowling alleys, anything that stays open until 2 or after, and step on it. I hope we're right. So do I. I don't like walking on eggs. Then sit down. Who knows? You might hatch something. Walt found out the name of the last victim, and the family supplied us with a picture. Her name was Martha Kirk, and her family knew nothing of her whereabouts the night of the murder. You can't really appreciate a police department until you really see them in action. Inside of two hours, Walt had every dive, bar, and night spot in the ten-mile circle tagged. They spread out, one man to every five blocks, each with a picture of the three murdered girls. Because it had been my idea, Walt wanted me to swim with it and maybe sink. I took a little section from 48th Street to 46th Street, and by late afternoon, I'd covered most of the likely prospects. You guessed it. The bottom of the barrel was coming up fast, and it was emptier than a ballpark during a thunderstorm. No one had ever seen the three victims. The last spot on the list was a bowling alley. I walked in and spotted the cocktail lounge. When I climbed up on one of the stools, a bartender with a head that should have been out on the alleys walked up to me. Yeah, what'll it be? Uh, how about a glass of milk? Glass of milk? Think you can stand it? Well, if you're worried, water it a little. I don't want to pass out on you. Eh, hey, get him. He made it funny. So did your family. You're looking for trouble? Only if I get pushed. I'm looking for information. Place door on the left. Yeah. Ever seen any of these girls before? What are you, cop? Let's say I'm nosy and that I've got a badge to keep me in the spirit of the thing. Oh, why'd you say so? Uh, uh, let me see him. All right, here's the first one. Uh, no, 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 I ain't never seen her. How about this one? Uh-uh. And this one? Nope. Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, sure, I know this one. Comes in here about twice a week. Was in last night. Gets lushed up, cries about how tough a family is on her knees. Uh... Uh, Kirk? Yeah. Uh, Martha. Uh, Martha Kirk. Nice looker. She was. Huh? Uh, did she ever come in with a man? No, but uh, sometimes she leaves with one. Same guy every time? No. Do you remember her leaving with a man last night? Uh, yeah, yeah. Come to think of it, she did. What time? No, mm, about 2.15. Uh, we stop serving the two right on the dot. That we do. That you do. Yeah, okay. Think you'd know the guy if you saw him again? Oh, sure. He comes in a couple times a week, too. Uh... I seen him pick up a couple of strays. <laughs> I guess you call him a wolf. Yeah, with a hatchet. Huh? Oh, forget it. Where's your phone? Uh, right over there. Hey, here, use a slug. It's on the house, officer. Thanks. Hope nothing's happened to Martha. She was a rotten drunk. What a wonderful kid. She was, huh? Precinct, Sergeant Otis. Otis, let me speak to the lieutenant, and if you crack just once, I'll come over there and shove your head so far down you'll have to untie your shoelaces to cough. Okay, okay, Diamond. You don't have to get nasty. Lieutenant Levinson. You can forget about retiring, Walt. You got something? Yeah, it looks like. What did your boys turn up? Nothing yet. What is it, Rick? Don't play games now. Get over to 47th and 9th, the bowling alley in the middle of the block. I'm in the bar. Want me to bring the boys? No, no. This is one we've got to play quietly. I don't want to scare our ghoul off. I'll be right down. Hey, what about that milk? Huh? Oh, yeah, yeah, coming up. Uh, hey, uh, is there going to be a pinch? Uh, there is, Buster. There certainly is. Walt romped in about a half hour later, and he talked to the bartender. He finally looked satisfied. He had to because it was the only lead that had turned up. We told the bartender to tip us if the guy showed again, and we sat on to wait. Maybe my rabbit's foot started thinking it was back with the quartet because around 1 a.m. it started kicking. The bartender gave us a nod just as a big guy wandered in and sat down at the bar. He weighed in at about 2.20, and his clothes were sloppy. 
He ordered a drink and started eyeing a cute little number sitting at the other end of the bar. Let's take him. Hold it, Walt. He's making a pitch. What? The dame at the end of the bar. So he's making a pitch. What do you want to do? Wait around till he takes her out of here? Maybe you'd like to help him sharpen his axe. Look, you haul him in now, you'll have to beat it out of him. You want him to pick the dame up? Well, is that against the law? Arrest me. Now, you stop clowning. You'd rather catch him with the goods, wouldn't you? Yeah, but... Now, don't start that again. You butted the commissioner to death. Just relax, and maybe you can pick up a few pointers. Our big boy moved all right. Right up to the seat next to the cute little girl. She was under full sail, didn't seem to mind it at all. He landed at 1.15. At 1.30, he'd established a firm beachhead, and by 2 o'clock, there was a flag raising. Okay, he scored. Now, the joint's closer. Uh, they're leaving. I'm going to tail him. How? He's probably got a car. And if he gets away with that girl, he may kill her. Look, Walt, I promise you, he won't get into that car unless I go, too. Now, come on. We'll both stick close to him until I can think of something. We followed the man and the girl outside and walked a few yards behind, making like we had a little load on they headed for a big parking lot, and that's when I got the idea. The parking attendant was just walking up to him when I stumbled forward. Hey, boy. Rick, what are you doing? Stay with me, Walt. Yeah? Uh, son, I want my car. Hey, just a minute. I was here first. Sure, honey. Don't let him get away with uh, it. Look, old man, my, my friend here is late getting home. He's got a wife that's ten feet tall. You mind if I get my car first? <laughs> ah, go ahead. Some nerve. Relax, honey. You're going to take a little drive, huh? Yeah. Okay, let's see your ticket. Well, here someplace. Well, come on, we'll walk up. I know where the car is. Okay, but you got to have a ticket. Rick, what's going on? Keep walking. Hey, I thought you was loaded. Keep going. We're the police. Huh? That's right. Oh, what's wrong? Which one is that guy's car? You mean the guy back there with the dame? Yeah. Uh, he gave me his ticket. Oh, uh, right over there, the coupe. Rick, come on. I'm going to climb in that trunk, and you're going to put in a general alarm, Walt. Then you're going to get in your car and tail us. But stay fine up behind so that he doesn't spot something. Okay, but I think you're crazy. Is the trunk open? Yeah. Now get going. Well, they'll see me coming back. Tell them you forgot something in the bowling alley and that I passed out my car. All right. Uh, and son. Yeah? Don't let on that anything had happened. We think that man is a killer. Oh. I squeezed into the trunk and waited. About two minutes later, the lovebird showed up and got in the front seat. We rode like that for about 15 minutes, and it wasn't bad until we hit the dirt road. Then my inside started bouncing around like a pound of rice in a wind tunnel. We drove for about 10 minutes more and came to a stop. I raised the trunk just enough, just enough to get some fresh air and listen. I didn't want to climb out because they'd feel the movement up in front. I was sure they could hear my breathing. <laughs> what are we stopping for? Well, I, uh... Uh-uh. <laughs> I, uh, just wanted to look at the pretty scenery. Now, how can you? It's too dark. Uh-huh. <laughs> I can see you, baby. You're nice. Thank you. <laughs> so, uh, thank you. They went on like that for another half hour, and I started thinking I'd picked the wrong guy. Then the conversation changed. What's the matter? That's so funny. Don't you know? No, and I don't like the way you're acting. Women. That's what's funny. They're all the same. Huh? Just like my wife. She was like all the other women. Hey, let's get out of here. You're talking funny. Funny? Yeah. See a man and you like him. Any man. You're all alike. Now you stop that. I just came along Come because... here. No, you let me go. You ain't no different. Come here. No, stop that. Let me get out of the car. Sure. Go ahead, go ahead. I don't want no blood stains on the seat anyway. Ah! Ah! Run! I'll catch you! Then tore it right down the middle. I rolled out and didn't forget to take my 38 along. I spotted him in the moonlight, moving after her like a big animal. He was laughing. I could see something in his hand. It was a knife. 
She tripped and fell, and he moved in. He gave me goosebumps bigger than grapefruit. When he was nearly on top of her, I closed in. <laughs> okay, hold it! Help! Help! You shut up! Drop the knife! I'll kill him! I'll kill her like a red <laughs> You all right, honey? No, no, no. Just take it easy. Take it easy. It's all over. I'm so glad you got here. Come on, now. Let's, let's get back to the car. Easy. You sure you're all right, dear? You know something? No, what? I think that man was crazy. <laughs> Well, Walt finally got there, and we sent the girl home. The wagon came and cleaned up things. I found out later that Walt was blessed by the commissioner, and I got an assist. I needed calming down, so I stopped off at 975 Park Avenue, the home of the best remedy for bruised nerves I knew of. Oh, good evening, sir. Good evening, Francis. Is Miss Asher in? Yes, sir. She's in the study, knitting. Knitting? Knitting. Thank you, Francis. Knit one, curl two. Knit one, curl two. That's like taking stupid pills. Rick. Hello, baby. Oh, look what I've gotten into. I'm a nervous wreck. Oh, that'll teach you. What are you building? Well, it was going to be a surprise for you. Oh, a whole suit. (laughs) Oh, silly. Ricky. Yes? I need relaxing. You need relaxing? Oh, swell. Ricky, come here. I know just a thing. No, come over here. There's an old a spinning wheel in the parlor. A spinning dreams of a long, long ago. Ricky! What's the matter, dear? Oh, what about this? Cruising down the river on a Sunday afternoon. Ricky. With one you love, the sun above, waiting for the moon. Ricky. The old accordion playing. Ricky. A sentimental tune. Rick. Honey, what's the matter? You can sing later. Oh, please. What is it with really, you, baby? Come here. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know something? What? I may never sing again. Okay. <laughs> You have just heard Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Helen was played by Virginia Gregg, Lieutenant Levinson by Ed Begley. Also in our cast were Wilms Herbert, Bill Conrad, Lorreen Tuttle, Jack Crucian, and Sidney Miller. Music was under the direction of Frank Worth. Richard Diamond is written by Blake Edwards and directed by William P. Rousseau. Now this is Eddie King inviting you to be with us again at the same time next week when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Thank <laughs> you.